church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us on this morning. We're going to ask that you stand and help us sing We Have Come Into This House. Thank you. 
Father acknowledges that it was nobody but the Lord. The sound writer gives an indication that if anybody brought you through, it was nobody but the Lord. The songwriter said, if you have a question about it, let me show you your answer today. It was nobody but the Lord. In the midst of your sickness, in the midst of your pain, nobody brought you through but the Lord. And for that reason, we showed up today just to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you for one more opportunity just to wave my hand because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it wasn't mama, it wasn't a long clock, it wasn't sister or brother, it was nobody but the Lord. And there was nobody. And there was nobody. It was nobody, it was nobody but the Lord himself. He watched over us all night long. While the thieves were stealing, God kept us. While the robbers were robbing, God kept us. While they were breaking in, God kept us. And I'm like the old folk would say, thank God this morning that the sheet I wind up in was not my winding sheet. Thank God this morning that, 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 that the board I laid on was not my cooling board. It was nobody but the Lord. He kept us. He brought us. He keeps right on keeping us. And for that this morning, if I don't see next Sunday, I'm thankful to God for one more time. Are you thankful? Are you thankful? Was it anybody but God? If you didn't get what you wanted, it was nobody but God who has brought you a mighty long way. Not only did he bring you a mighty long way, he brought us all the way. There was nobody but him. Your education couldn't have lost. Your job couldn't have kept you. Your unemployment didn't fit the bill. It was only God, baby. Dude, it was only God. And God had kept us one more time. Somebody here today ought to testify that it was nobody. I said it was nobody. It was nobody but the Lord. He knows how to keep us in our right mind where we don't stumble over ourselves. He knows how to keep us putting one foot in front of the other. He knows how to keep us walking in the midst of trouble. If they dug ditches for you, don't worry about fighting back. He knows how to direct us. He's our GPS. He keeps us in spite of us. And let me just serve notice on you. It's not because you're so spiritual. It's not because you've done so many good things. It's not because he, you have kept yourself. It was only God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We ought to praise Him. We ought to thank Him. We ought to build Him up. We ought to magnify Him. But there's nobody, nobody like my God. There's nobody like the God I serve. There's nobody like the God I serve. The songwriter said, He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am His own. There's nobody like Him. He just keeps right on blessing us. In spite of us. In spite of our meanness. In spite of our predicament. He keeps right on blessing us. Your paycheck can't get you that. When you're sick and you're down and out, 
It does not matter how much money you have. If you got the best doctor in town, you need God to keep you. Somebody here can testify this morning that he kept me through danger, seen and unseen. There's nobody, nobody like the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Chronicle writer says it like this. The Chronicle writer says that they praise the Lord with the instruments until a cloud filled the room where the preacher could not preach. A priest could not minister because the glory of the Lord was present in the room. Give him glory. Give him honor. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. All the praise. All the glory. I tell you, he's worthy today. He's worthy today. He's worthy today. He is. He is the great I am. He's God all by himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you just praise the Lord, you can cancel your gym membership now. Because in the presence of the Holy One. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. He is God all by himself. He's God all by himself. He is the great act. <coughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We should have showed up with the psalmist says before you get out the car the psalmist says before you walk up on the courtyard the psalmist declares before the doors are open you ought to be thankful unto God you ought to praise him thank him who he is. Not to mention what he's done. <laughs> Just thank him for who he is. Who he is. Just who he is. God, you are God. You, you are God alone. You're God all by yourself. You, you, there's no one like you. There's no one who can do what you can do. God, there's nobody who can step out in the middle of nothing on the balcony of nowhere in the midst of darkness and say let there be and light come skipping and flood the universe that, that's enough that's enough just to be thankful but he is he is he's God he's, he's God he's God he's God God. He's not the president. He's God. Thank God he's not the governor. He's God. Don't worry about the mayor. He's God. We came and lift up God. Because there's no one like him. There's none like him. All those other little small G gods, when God shows up, they have to move over. And the thing about when God shows up, he's already omnipresent. He's all places at the same time. 
He's God. And when these little G gods show up, don't worry about them. Because we serve an all-knowing God. He is omniscient. He knows it before you think it. And if you're just wondering if he's powerful, he's an omnipotent God. He is all power. And we've come today to worship him. And if you think you can understand God, we can't understand him because he's a sovereign God. He does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, to whom he chooses to do it, any way he chooses to do it. For he is the sovereign God. There's another word that I just kind of put together. You know, preachers make up words all the time. There's another word that I, I just chose to put together. He's a he's a um, individual God. He's an individual God. He sees everything. And he does not need an eye test. He doesn't need a prescription. He's an individual God. He sees everything. Oh, good God. Thank God that he's God. I thank God that he is. He is. No explanation. People ask me, why, why you act like that? Just tell me, he's God. Why, why you go to church in the midst of a pandemic? He's God. Why you raise your hands? Why you stomp your feet? Just tell him, he's God. Why is it, why, why is it you lose your personality in the, in the presence of God? Just remind them, He is God. I can't explain it. There's no definition for it. As a matter of fact, He has always been God. He wasn't elected God. He wasn't legislated to be God. He wasn't voted in to be God. He always is God. He always was God. And he always will be God. He is God. Thank, thank God you ain't God. Thank God I'm not God. He, he is. He's God. He's all-knowing God. All-present God. All-sovereign God. He's God. And he doesn't need an accomplice. He's God. All by himself. He, he's just God. Oh, good God. Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. Thank you, congregation. For acknowledging him. as God. He's God. Let me call your attention to Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9. I want to try to finish this particular chapter out. Hebrews chapter 9. Last two verses. <coughs> Verses 27 and 28. When you find it, you will see why today's worship and praise was so fitting. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 to 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 to 28. You found it, you will discover these words. And as it is appointed to 
And as it is appointed, for men to die once. But after the judgment, after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. But those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. I want to talk about eagerly awaiting. Eagerly awaiting. We grew up in the country. I'm not talking about country like y'all grew up. I'm talking about country. I'm talking about on a plantation country. I'm talking about four mile Mississippi country. I mean, you had to be in by the time the street lights came on. In four mile Mississippi, they still don't have street lights. You put your hand in front of your face, you can't see it. We grew up in the country. We yeah. hogs ate at five thirty. Right. We ate at six thirty. Yeah. Cows ate at five forty-five. Yeah. We ate at six thirty. Grass had to be chopped yeah. from around the cotton. I'm telling you, we grew up in the country, right. yes, way back in the woods. Nine miles from Inverness, Mississippi. Nine miles from Belzona, Mississippi. Six miles from Isola, Mississippi. They are, all of them are barely on the map today. We grew up way in the country. We had dusty roads. And whenever six o'clock came, we were looking forward to seeing Daddy walk down that dusty road. All right, all right. He'd been on the cotton picker all day. He had been building houses all day. He had been welding all day. He had been driving tractors all day. And I looked forward to seeing that six foot two man with these long strides walking down the dusty road. I was waiting. My, my siblings and I, we didn't have a swing set that we sit out and watch him come. We clammed trees and threw china berries at each other. I'm telling you, we were in the country. But when six o'clock came, all four of us will stand on the porch, stand on the gallery, and watch Daddy walk up the road. He didn't have to have any treats because we were nine miles from the store. But we just long awaited for Daddy to jump off that iron horse, come down that road, because we were long awaiting his arrival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We looked forward to the day that daddy didn't have to well anymore because we wanted him to be with us. Amen. Some people are not as fortunate as, as I am. I, I had a daddy that, that treated us like we were his children and not his friend. I, I, I had a daddy that that barely spoke. Yes. But when he spoke, E.F. Hudden shut up. Come on, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a daddy that when he disciplined, you looked forward to getting out of his grasp. There was no timeouts. There was no corners that you sit in. And when we went to the grocery store, 
once a week. I would see other children fall out on the floor and go to Hollywood. Ah, and daddy act like we were doing it. He said, you better not try it. You better not dream of it. And you better not act that way. We discovered at an early age that children needed discipline. So we look forward. We look forward. Regardless of how many women. And we got women. We got talking to. We got whippings, and when you did it again, whipping became something that they call abuse now. Both of my parents ought to be locked up for life. But we all are working. We all are staying out of prison. We all are not stealing. We all have houses. We all are respectable in the community. So I say it turned out all right. The other day I saw a little boy, I guess it was middle school or something, took a desk, throwing it at the substitute teacher, just throwing it, and gashed him over the top of his head. And the guy that was commentating was saying, the teachers can't get help. The parents get help, the children get help, but the teachers can't get help. So this teacher had had enough. He started picking up chairs himself, and he started throwing it back at him. We live in a day where we are long awaiting Jesus' return. Because we know, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's an appointed time. You can keep doing the fool if you want to. You can keep acting crazy if you want to. You can keep doing just enough to get by if you want to. There's an appointed time for everything to come to a close. This text, this text in Hebrews chapter 9, is oftentimes recited and preached at funerals. This morning, when I called your attention to it, somebody said, that's a funeral text. But I want to serve you notice. When you get to the funeral, it's too late. When your tongue cleaved to the roof of your mouth for the very last time. It's too late. <laughs> when they fold your hand in service <laughs> for the very last time, it's too late. <laughs> when the choir sings over you, the preacher preaching lies over you, it's too late. And when they deposit your body back to the earth, let me tell you, it's too late. When they leave the funeral side, the, the graveside, and, and go eat fried chicken and drink red soda water, it's too late. They moan for a while. They remember you for a moment. And then you become a poor player that has strutted yourself upon the stage. Life is just a poor player. That has strutted itself on the stage and poof, it is gone. And you will never see it again. Young people, don't, don't, don't think you've got a long time. <laughs> don't, don't think you can control your time. Don't think that just because you're young, you can't get out of here. My first point, my first point is the appointment. There's an appointed time. The appointment. The, the appointment. You may go to the doctor and you get there late, but this appointment, you're going to be right on time. You may go to your job and you made it a consistency of being late. This appointment, you're going to be on time. You may have a habitual design, a habitual layout, a habitual life of being late. You may be late for the funeral, but you won't be late for this point. The text, the Hebrew writer, the Hebrew writer has already said to us that Jesus is our advocate. He, he makes intercession for us. The Hebrew writer says he's our lawyer. He pleads our case because we are not qualified 
to plead our case. The Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter 11, we need to throw aside every weight that so easily beset us and run this race with conviction. And he says two things. He says, run the race, but look to Jesus. <laughs> when you look at a track star, that star strips down to barely nothing. They have on absolutely nothing. The Apostle Paul talks about this, and he says, you need to lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. Folk that beset you, <laughs> things that beset you, activities that beset you, attitudes that beset you, structures that beset you. You have to get to a point in your life where you understand that you have an appointment and that appointment is with death. You're going to leave here. You're going to leave here. In, 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 in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, it discusses with us that from the dust we have come. And from the dust we will return. You see, you are not even good dirt. You just dust. <laughs> Your body, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can be built like a Coca-Cola and a Sprite bottle all together. But you just dressed up dirt. You, 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 may, you may have the best shape in town. But you just dressed up dust. Uh, you, you just, you're just walking around living your life and let me share with you one day your life is going to come to an end and you don't, you don't know when you don't know where you don't know how and in today's world you don't know who I pulled out I, I pulled from one lane to the other lane yesterday and this lady just laid on her horn I said doesn't she know folks shooting folks for just slightly touching the horn and, you know, I didn't obstruct her path of flow. I just, I just signaled and moved over. But we have to get to a point where we realize that any moment can be that appointed moment. Any moment you can leave home with joy bells singing, joy bells ringing deep down in your heart. But it can be any given moment that your life can be snuffed away just like that. They're, they're, they're young graves, they're short graves, they're, they're long graves, they're, they're huge graves, they're, they're people that they, they had to do certain things for. But the fact of the matter is, you don't know when your appointment will be. You don't know. See, God gives a specific time for you to do what you are called to do. God gives a specific time, and only God knows where, when, who, and how. Pastor Shook in the Woodlands wrote a book. He and his wife wrote a book called, What Would You Do If You Had 30 Days to Live? And you knew you had 30 days. Would you do something differently? Would you start getting structure together? One of the most horrible scenes I've ever done, is, I've ever seen, is when I went to the hospital to visit a person, and instead of that person saying goodbye and wholesome things to her children, she began to tell the children about all the stuff that she and her siblings had years ago. The, the doctor said she will not make it through the night. The doctor this time was right. But she spent her last moment telling her children, don't trust this one. This one did that one to me. This, instead of telling her children, this is how you live. And this is how you live for the Lord. And, and this is where I left money to you. And, and this is why you, why you need to do things this way. She took that moment and died in bitterness. She had an appointment. And she had to keep it. My question to you, will you do the right thing before your appointed time? Will you say the right thing 
before your appointed time. Will you be with the right person? Doing the right thing in the right place at your appointed time. Let me tell you, you can, you can be up in the, in, in the pandemic has shown us this. COVID-19 has shown us that, that you can go home from the hospital and be doing just fine. I mean, they, they said, oh, your, your lungs are clear. You, you're doing just fine. You don't have headaches anymore. You can eat what you want to eat. You can go back to life as usual. And within the next hour, the next minute, the next second, you can be out of here. It's a serious moment. You must take this appointment seriously. This word appointed time, this word appointed means that it's been reserved. This word appointed means that this time has been laid up for you. This word appointed means that there's a waiting moment. And that moment is just for you. It doesn't matter if you're a twin or a triplet or not. You're going to get out of here whether you leave with your twin or your triplet or not. We have appointed time. We are in the last days. We don't have rumors of wars. We have wars. We, we have, have mothers against daughters and daughters against mothers. We have, have boys against their fathers and fathers against their boys. And now we got everybody against everybody else. The way you talk calls people to look at you strangely. The way you look calls people to look at you strangely. I mean, stuff that you had nothing to do with. For somebody to defraud you because of your color. You had nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, you wasn't even on the scene. <laughs> Matter of fact, you probably wasn't even thought that you were going to be here during that period. Right. And somebody will take advantage of you and mistreat you and misuse you because of who you are. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. They used to say, well, if that person got killed, what did they do to the other person? You don't have to do anything these days. You just exist. You have an appointed time. Children in the United States of America are being shot and killed every single day just by riding in the car. Yeah, yeah. They don't have to say anything. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to act any kind of way. You can send your child off to school and never see them ever again. They have appointed time. And because we have appointed time, we need to take every moment very seriously. The text, the text declares that it is appointed unto men to die once. King James would say it is appointed unto men to once die. What it says to us, when we die, we have no more blood flow. When we die, we have no more heartbeat. When we die, we have no more inhaling and exhaling. I'm not talking about going to sleep, laying in the very image of death. I'm talking about there is a appointed time, there's a reserved time, there's a laid up time for you to physically die. To breathe your last breath. We never know, we never know, we never know when we're talking to that person for the last time. Therefore, when you're talking to them anytime, you better make sure you have something good to say simply because you never know when it's your last time. And people who cuss folk out, they're the first one guilt. They get guilted real quick. Oh, let me in the casket. It should have been me. It should have been me. I should have been the one to go. Handle life like it's your last second. Handle life like you don't have any control of it because you don't. One, one, one family, one family was, was, was carrying out so badly. They, they were just all over, I mean, falling all over the place, hollering and screaming. The pastor stood up and said, Undertakers, come. Close the casket up. Roll it back outside. Let them do that on the outside. Because we are trying to move with a ceremony. And let me tell you, young man, young woman, if you treat your parents, your grandparents, your aunties right, if you treat your uncles, your cousins, and your neighbors right, when they expire, you can say, I've done all I can do. Praise be to the Lord. 
you can say like Job, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Because the time is appointed. The time is a specific time. The time is reserved. The time is laid up. And God has the time clock. You can walk around here and use springing forward as an excuse if you want. I'm not going to look up. I'm, I can't look back either because there are folk back there too. So, Don't let your life pass you by with a bunch of excuses. Let me tell you, when we grew up, the hall is going to be fed at 5.30. Mom and daddy didn't come and wake us up. We didn't have to have an alarm clock to get up. When that sun rose over the eastern hemisphere, we were already outside slopping around. We have to understand that our duties to perform must be serious duties. We say we are great servants of the most high God, but we walk around with excuses every day. We, we have an appointed time. Our appointed time, it is appointed unto every man wants to die, and then comes the judgment. You'll be judged for everything you do. You'll be judged for everything you say. Matthew says it like this, every idle word will be brought into judgment. You see people say little, little coy things, little crap, little jokes at your expense. It's going to be brought into the judgment. One of these days, you don't have to worry about little stuff that people do to you. Because God is going to judge all of us for what we do, what we say, and how we act, even how we think. Right. Even our attitude. And if you want to see some attitudes, neighbors, show up at 10.30, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. You can pick up some attitudes. I mean, it's almost like when folk get saved and start going to church, they, they have a card block, a card to say that I have the right to have an attitude now. People visit, and not at this church, but at church down the street around the corner. People visit, and they feel uncomfortable because you are so sedentary, looking down your nose at them as if you just stepped out of the cloud. Let me just share with you, it was just yesterday that you were in the same position they were in. We ought to be welcoming. We ought to be loving. We ought to be, be, be running toward people to to say welcome to the house of God. Yes. Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be miserable? Wouldn't it be sad if you invited folk to your house and then you treated them bad? You called them names. You frowned at them when they walked in the door. Now you invited them here. You told them you cook it for them. And then when you deliver the food to the plate, Brother Miles, you take a big old spoon and slap it on the plate. I didn't want you here anyhow. I was just being nice. You know, church folk can be nice and nasty. I mean, the kitchen, the, the kitchen serving folks are some of the worst folk to get you to serve them. No hospitality, no love, and don't mention the plates that they already stacked in the back before you even showed up. All of this happened at the church. At the Lord's house, the house of prayer, the place where we go to worship him and, and glorify him. And then your children looking at you like, Mom, is that the same woman I just left at home? It is appointed unto us once to die, then comes the judgment. Then come the judgment. This, this word judgment means condemnation. We're going to be condemned for everything that we do wrong. This word judgment means a decision is going to be made about you. This word judgment means justice will be served. We're looking for justice for Brianna. We're looking for justice for Trayvon. We, we're looking for justice for, for Floyd. We, we're looking for justice all over the world. But let me just share with you, God is the great judge. And he's going to judge us one day. And when he judges us, he's going to perform justice. 
That's why when we fall into sin, when we find ourselves in the sin, uh, we need to do like 1 John says. We need to run before the altar and bring our sins before him with confession of our sins. For he is faithful and he is just to forgive us from our sins. And not only does he leave it there, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Justice will be served. It says, text declares, and as it is appointed to us, to every man, to die once. But after that, the judgment. A second point is affirmation. There's, there's the appointment. But there is also affirmation. Verse number 28 says, So Christ was offered wants to bear the sins of many. Christ was offered once to bear the sin of many. Who was Christ? He died one time. Not just for one person, but for all of us. He was offered up one time. He was murdered. One time. He was killed. One time. Christ, the innocent one, died for all of us who are guilty. Romans 3.23 says it like this. For we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We think it says y'all have sinned. It says we all have sinned. We all have fallen short of God's glory. Let me tell you, I have sinned. I'm not qualified to be here. I'm not good enough to be here. It's only because Big Mama says it's God's mercy that kept us here. It's God's grace that's keeping us here. It's because of God's mercy and God's grace. Because if justice had had its way, we would not be present today. The affirmation. The affirmation, the affirmation is that Christ has died once. And because he's Christ, he never has to die again. There are some still looking for him to come. He has come and he has gone. He died one time in that sin that the whole world had, has a potential of being washed away. When Adam and Eve were in the garden and they sinned, they had to kill an animal, a sacrifice for their sin. That was one animal, one sacrifice for one person. One animal, one sacrifice for one person. When they were leaving Egypt and everybody was ordered into a quarantine, See, we thought that was the first quarantine. But everybody was ordered into a quarantine right before they left Egypt. And God says, I'm going to send the death angel by. And when I send the death angel by, I'm going to pass over every household where there's blood. So they had to kill an animal, a blood sacrifice for one's family. So Adam and Eve, one per person. Then... In Egypt, one per household, one per family. And then when they got in the wilderness, and they had to, to sacrifice the whole nation, millions are out there. They had to kill a blood sacrifice. And there was one sacrifice for one nation. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know when Jesus died on Calvary. And I'm not closing now. <laughs> When Jesus died on Calvary, that was one sacrifice for the whole world. <laughs> it was a blood sacrifice. It was the death of an innocent man. The Bible says to us that, that there were three men crucified. There was one on the left side that died in sin. There's one on the right side that died from sin. But the man in the middle died for sin. 
He died for the sin of the whole, the whole wide world. He says he died because he bore our sins. He died one time, and he bore the sins of many. The last part of that verse, I call the appearance. Yes, there's an appointment. Yes, there's affirmation. But finally, there is the appearance. All right, all right. Let me tell you, we used to sit on the gallery and wait on a six-foot giant to walk down, six-foot-two giant to walk down the road. It was a dusty road. But we were sitting and waiting on that. And we were just waiting on him just to show up. You see, for some folk, they have to show up with goodies. We was just glad <laughs> to see that. <laughs> the text, the text declares, to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Here he talks, he talks to the saved and he talks to those who will endure. We live in tough times. We live in trying times. New religions are popping up everywhere. People are jumping ship all over the place. But the text says, when he appears, he's looking for those who are born again. Those who will endure the fiery darts of tribulation. God is looking to appear you know Jesus is God. He, he rolled himself up in human flesh. Got off in a place called Judea. In a little town called Bethlehem. God rolled himself up in flesh. He, he appeared the first time. He showed us on these mundane shores that he is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is Jesus. He's the one who opened blinded eyes. He's the one who raised the dead. That same Jesus. They took one day on a skull hill called Calvary. That same Jesus appeared to play his role out. Let me just share with you, if you're in church and you are a pew member, let me tell you, God has no pew member. You need to find something somewhere, something for God to use you. God has put something in you. God has placed something in you that he has placed in no one else. And he wants to get the best out of you. When you move, when you go, when you go to another city, the, the, the Baptist government said you ought to join yourself with another congregation. And then we'll forget a couple of women left the church, they moved out and you know, it just happened to be women, all right? Don't, don't shoot the message. It just happened to be women. A couple of women left the church, and, and, and I was always getting these calls. Well, they're not, they're not new beginning church over here, so I haven't found me a church. I said, you better get yourself in church. <laughs> you, you, you need to get in the Lord's house. Well, you know, the people are not like the people at New Beginning. I'm saying to myself, well, you must don't know the folk at New Beginning. <laughs> because they got red blood running through their veins also. And that's why I tell folks, I know your children are cute, I know your grandchildren are cute, but they got red devilish blood running through them, and what they won't do to you and don't, won't do in your presence, they will do it in your absence. We walk around with our eyes in the cloud, our head in the cloud, our ears in the cloud. We, we just walk around, and, and then we will stick our head in the sand, exposing the rest of us. Not believing that this could really be going on. Let me tell you, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your spouse, your husband, your, your wife, we all are blood. And blood is running. As long as blood is running warm in our brain, we are capable of messing up. We are capable of doing something wrong. So don't get it twisted, baby. 
Let me just share with you. Only thing you can do is pray for them and love them and show them some more love. Pray, and when they mess up, show them some more love. Beg, beg them to come on back to the Lord. And because the Lord is saying, though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash you whiter than snow. And that's why we can't look down at anybody else simply because we all are messed up. We all have fallen short. We all are sinners. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. You messed up also. It's only because of God's grace. It's because of God's mercy that, that I'm able to stand in the pulpit to pull you out the pit. It, it only, it's not because I've never been in the pit. It's just because God has chosen me. And let me tell you, I know he has chosen me because if he had not chosen me, I wouldn't be doing this. I could go play marbles or something. I, would, I certainly wouldn't be doing this. I mean, I could, I could go back to engineering. I could go back to electronics. I certainly would if he had not called me. I, I went out. I, I, mean, I mean, I didn't have this problem with electronic equipment. They didn't talk back to me. I, I, didn't have, I, didn't, I didn't have this problem with lines on a sheet of paper. All I had to do is erase the line when I mess it up and put another line on there. I didn't have this problem in, in drafting. I didn't have this problem with the attitude. Of, and if the, paper, if the paper got out of whack, all I had to do is press it down a little bit. And then we moved to a computer. And all I had to do, if the computer get out of whack, I call somebody else to fix it. Let me tell you, as a pastor, I can't call nobody but, but him. And he's the right one to call. Let me tell you if, you, if you are not working for the Lord, you need to get busy for him because your time is running out. And let me just tell, tell you this. Most of us in this room, we got more time behind us than we got in front of us. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how old you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how sanctimonious you are. Most of us in this room, I dare tell you, we got more time behind us. We got more stuff we've already been through than we got in front of us. Let me just share with you. Some of us, we, we won't make it to be 100. And some of us won't, won't make it to be 80. But the fact of the matter is, when I leave here, I want God to say, servant, come on home. Well done. And it just hurts me when I, I, hear, I hear preachers and teachers and doctors, they, you better put some respect on my name. First of all, that's a worldly statement. Put some respect on my name because the fact of the matter is whether they call you pastor, whether they call you doctor, whether they call you deacon, whether they call you servant or not, the fact of the matter is if they call you sister, if they call you brother, you are included in this great kingdom of God. You ought to, re you ought to rejoice because you're in the kingdom. Because pride comes right before the fall. Pride, the guy told me, man, you know, they're going to they gonna call me reverend. Well, you know, they don't have to call you anything. They, 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 they don't even, matter of fact, one of these days, they're not going to call you at all. Because our time is running out. And if they don't call you what you want, man, I've been called, the names that these children are being called that they're going to court for right now, I would call those names many, many years. I went to a, a, a predominantly white college. And, and it was only two of us that made it in the whole electronic department that year. And when the teacher went to teaching and, and he wanted to give some extra points for the test the next day, he would go behind us and teach to the white boys and let them get all the points. And they, they would call me name. And, and one day, one day we were out at break time. And I, I went over there and they were all sitting around in the table. This is in Mississippi in, in 1981 in Mississippi. And I went and sat in the middle of the table. And Tom Blue was the only other black in the room. Tom Blue said, man, come on, man, don't, don't start nothing. We both going to have to fight. I don't want to do this. I went and sat in the middle of the table. And the guy says to me, he said, look, man, we having a KKK meeting here. I said, well, you've been joined by the NAACP. We have to get to a point where we understand that talk can't hurt us. We need to get back to the old slogan, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never harm me. I mean, people getting a big payday for being called names. Don't let names call you. Be concerned about what God is going to call you. And if God called you servant, you ought to be serving. And let me just drop this in your spirit and let you know, in order for you to hear God say, well done, you would have to have done well. 
You see, everybody want to hear God say, servant, well done, but they don't want to do well. They, they don't, I mean, they, 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 they want to be dragging when they do something. I, I, I hate to see a young man with his britches around his rear end. I saw a 40 some year old young man. And every time he been, you see his crack. Man, I don't want to see that. Grow up. Get, get some life. Do something different. Do something else for your life. If you, if you can't make it, if you can't get the degree, act like you got one. If you're not intelligent, dress like you're intelligent. If you can't speak well, go and get educated and get some speaking well. We have to influence our young people to keep moving, to keep going. And don't let them sit down talking about, I can't do that. Stop whining. Yeah. You are the Lord. Be, be strong and be a, a good courage and, and be, be powerful. You are different. You are a raw priesthood. God has beautifully and wonderfully made you. You are special to God. And Jesus is coming back again. That same Jesus, I say he's coming back again. And when he comes back, he's coming to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He's not coming to get a church with excuses. He's not coming to get people that said, I would have, could have, should have. His appearance is round the corner. His appearance is round the corner. His appearance may take place before we leave here today. The, the songwriter said, get right church and let's go home. From the dust we came, and from the dust we shall return. The text, the text closes by saying that we eagerly wait for him. He will appear the second time, and he won't be dealing with sin. The church will be raptured up. This word salvation means that you will have your deliverance. Ukraine, just wait. You will have your deliverance. <laughs> Houston, just wait. Texas, just wait. And it doesn't matter who the next governor, who's the, who's the next mayor. The fact of the matter is, his appearance is about to take place. We're living in the last days. And, and let me just share with you, in these last days, God is going to crack the sky. Yeah, Jesus is going to crack the sky. What Jesus are you talking about? I'm talking about the Jesus <laughs> that took a dogwood tree. <laughs> Yes, he did. He, he put it on his shoulder. He marched up Calvary Hill. He carried his own cross. Yes, he did. He, he marched up Calvary Hill. He died on that hill that day. My Lord and your God, he died on that hill that day. They killed him. He died that day. He didn't go to sleep that day. He died that day. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died until the S.U.N. refused to shine. He died until the moons dripped down like drops of blood. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. My Lord and your God, he died on Calvary. That same Jesus who died on Calvary, they took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a borrowed tomb, I tell you. It was Joseph's brand new tomb. It was a tomb that had never been slept in. He died and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early, bright and early. Some of y'all that got up late this morning, you may not understand this, but Jesus. Jesus got up early from the dead. So you should have been able to get up early from the bed. He got up early. Before the rooster could crow, he got up early. Before Pilate could change the God, he got up early. Before the women could anoint his body, he got up early that Thursday morning with all power in his hand. The same Jesus who got up early on the third day morning, he caught a cloud, got out of here. And you can see the disciples today, they standing there gazing. And then the, 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 the angel said, why stand ye here gazing? That same Jesus that left here on a cloud. Don't worry about it. He's coming back on a cloud. Not on a Lexus. Not on a Lincoln. He's coming back on a cloud. That same Jesus that left on a cloud. The Bible says 
he will appear. Oh, how blessed is the hope we have. We are waiting. We are eagerly awaiting for the appearance of him. His glorious appearance. The great God, our Jesus the Christ. He's coming back again. Oh, how great will it be when he cracked the sky. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up in midair. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you think we were loud in here today, just keep praising him. Just keep worshiping him. When we get over there, we gonna sure enough have some church. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If the drums are too loud now, you better get ready. Over there, they gonna play some music. If the organ is too loud right now, just get ready. Over there, it's sure enough gonna be loud. If the good talk is too loud now, over yonder, it's sure enough gonna be loud. If the saxophone is too loud now, just wait a minute. Over there, it's sure enough gonna be loud. If the keyboard is too loud right now, over yonder, it's really gonna be loud. If the piano is too loud down here, Wait just a moment. Over there, it's really going to get loud. If the tambourine is playing a song over here, and you can't stand it over here, just keep waking up in the morning. When Jesus come back, it's going to make a sound like a mighty rushing wind. The dead in Christ shall rise, and those of us who remain will be caught up. We'll be caught up with him. We'll be caught up with him at his appearance in midair. And the text declares, we will forever be with the Lord. Paul says, Paul says, comfort one another with these words. I know life is giving us raw deals, but we can be assured. We can comfort one another. And the fact that while our Savior is coming back to get us. You see, kings in the United States, kings all over the world, Putin has demanded children, women and men, go off to fight in his war. But our king, King Jesus, he didn't send us into battle. He went out and fought for us. He died, I tell you. He fought the battle for us. He gave his life, a volunteer life, just for us. And that same Jesus that died, same Jesus that rose, is coming back again. It's appointed to every man, every woman, every child to die once. But the good news is we have the affirmation. We have the affirmation that just like man dies once, Jesus has died once and for all. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. The door is open. You ought to try Jesus. You've tried her. You've tried him. You've tried them. And you've tried it. I recommend that you try Jesus. The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. The door is open. Will you come? If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. You ought to come. Amen. Amen. Have a seat right here. We have one who has come. I said we have one who has come. The door is open.
if you you struggle with sin like I do if you struggle and fight with stuff like I do you struggle with obedience like I do this is your moment come on and give it to Jesus the door is open the door is open He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Jesus loves you. school and, and we want to make sure that um, he's doing the right thing in school. Uh, I'm, I'm going to school to, to study medicine and want to be a doctor. Tell us what school you're doing. I go to Lamar um, University in Beaumont. Amen. Amen. So Alan Motor has received Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Amen. Now the Bible says when one come to Christ, uh, the angel in heaven rejoice. And he's come today as a candidate for baptism. And so I'm, I'm going to be referring him to Pastor Deborah Max Church in Beaumont, where his soul can be fed. But we want to baptize him at the New Beginning Church. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this, our brother. We thank you for his life. We thank you for blessing him. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify you for his spirit. We thank you for the Jesus that's in him. We pray, Father God, that you bless him and keep him. Bless him in his studies, Father God. Amaze him in the professors. We pray that you walk with him, keep him healthy, keep him strong. We pray for his dream as a doctor, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, we thank you for this young man who has come. Yes, we ask you to bless him, Father God, that he will walk with you. Yes, and bless him, Father God, that he will be a living testimony yes. for others to see. Yes. We thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank God. Yes. This little bit of short mama is back there. We'll ask his mom to stand. We'll ask Sister, Sister Nikki George to stand. That's his, his mom. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the awesome and amazing God. Yeah, we're looking forward to baptizing him, taking him to the water. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, we need, we need young men who love the Lord. Amen. In college, we, look, we need young men who, who love the Lord in college. We need we need young men who are strong in their faith, and uh, we're looking forward to taking them to the water. Amen. We're looking forward to for him being baptized. We praise God. Uh, we know he was. He came up through the New Beginning Church, and he has no excuse. 
Hallelujah. We're just so glad that he has, he has come today to uh, become a candidate for, for baptism. Amen. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. <clears throat> if you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus at Yahoo.com. Lifting, lifting. The idea is as we lift Jesus, lifting God Jesus, he will draw all men unto me, unto himself. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for jobs. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for another privilege to give. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When I actually decide to stand, come forth and bring the Lord's tithes off of the sacrifice. Father 
God, we thank you for these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To our visitors, thank you so much for visiting with us. We have a visitor on the drum today. We want to thank her. I think she's under there somewhere. Why don't you stand up and tell us who you are and tell us who you got with you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Alan Taylor. I am a member of Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Good Grove Missionary Baptist Church and Hope Grove Missionary Baptist Church. I just, just a little bit. I have my mother with me. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me let me uh, recognize my other visitor. Any other visitors? Would you please stand if you're visiting with us? If you're visiting, just tell us who you are. Uh, who invited you? If you're visiting with us. Okay, thank you. I'm going to give you a membership form when we, before you leave. Amen. Thank you so much. Thanks to all our visitors for visiting. Uh, let me just make sure that, uh, you know, we got we got Twitter, we got email, we got text messages. So um, as a pastor, I want to make sure I clear it out. Sister Eileen Taylor has not taken Brother Whitlock's job. You know, I, I've been y'all for 59 years now. I've been I've been y'all for a long time. And she, Sister, Sister Eileen has had breaks during Second Sunday, so she uh, she diligently came and played for us. Well, we thank God for her. Uh, okay, I, I can see it now, Brother Carter. Before we get out of this room, he brought some woman in there. She was dressed like an African too. She, she, she just pushed Brother, Brother Whitlock off. Girl, you should have seen her. Brother Whitlock was looking down the whole time. After he, he put that woman on there. You, you, you understand. You understand. You understand. Yes. Amen. I want to thank Keith for showing up for, for us. I to thank Keith for, for playing on the drums for us. Thank you, Keith. We, we, we want to invest in our young people. We want to invest and our young people and give them opportunities to, to play and, and if it's grandmama bring them to church he can play right. and just like this is what it is you know you know he can't drive and if, if it's grandmama bring him to church at nine o'clock at nine o'clock he can play amen it'd be good if he had 845 <laughs> just in time for Sunday school I mean, today's message was a message of conviction. Amen. <laughs> Grandmama, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah, that's her right there. That's her. Amen. Hallelujah. So, thank you, Keith. Man. Thank you so much. We want Keith to play our, our ending song today as he played when he when we were coming in today. We want him to play our closing song and uh, and lead us out here today. Amen. Amen. So, Davis, you'll come with the prayer list for me, please. prayer list is long and we need to bombard heaven amen and tell the lord all about it we need to bombard heaven and tell god what we're going through amen because he is the righteous and the only true god i understand i just want to ask you a question i want to ask you ask you a question are you eagerly awaiting his return yes. as we sign off with the with the um the internet uh, church. I just want to 
make a couple of announcements once we come on, brother. Now, once we we sign off, I just want to make a a couple of announcements. Amen.